Hi, I'm Femi OK. On today's episode of The Stream, has the Democratic Republic of Congo finally found a solution to its security challenges? On the eastern part of the country, there are over 100 armed groups vying for territory, fighting the military and terrorising civilians. This is Elodie's story. So why is this happening? Well, the DRC has so many natural resources, the land is literally worth fighting over. The government has imposed a state of siege for two eastern provinces, so that's basically martial law. How is that state of siege going? That is the question we are going to ask our guests. Let's meet them. Hello, Fred. Hello, Minister. Hello, Jackie. They're about to introduce themselves to you. Fred, go ahead. Tell everybody who you are and what you do. Hi, my name is Fred Bauma, and I'm an activist of the youth movement Lucha, uh, Lutte pour le changement, and I'm also um, a researcher at Congo Research Group. Good to have you, Fred. Hello, Minister. Welcome to the stream. Great to have you on the stream. Thank you for making time. Introduce yourself to our stream audience. My name is Patrick Muyaya. I'm currently the Minister of Communication Media, the spokesperson of government. I was elected twice as a member of parliament before joining the government. Today I will be talking from you live from Beni, one region who is under a state of siege. Mm -hmm. Good to have you. Hello, Jackie. Welcome to the stream. Introduce yourself to our international viewers. Good evening. I am Jackie Keegan. I'm the head of the Office of the High Commissioner for Refugees in Goma, in the east of Congo, and I'm speaking from Goma. So now you have met the guests, what would you like to ask them? What comments do you have about what is happening on the eastern side of the DRC right now? If you're on YouTube, you can be part of this show right now. Just jump into the comment section, be part of the discussion. I want to start, though, with a tweet. This is such a good tweet. Gets right to the, right to the core of the question. Have a look here on my laptop. Was there any positive achievements during this period of three months? So this is when the state of siege was in place, is in place. Military law is in place. Fred, I'm going to actually, I'm going to get all of the guests to respond just very briefly to that initial question. Has anything happened that's good in the past three months? Fred, go ahead. I think the most positive thing that may have happened is the attention that uh, has been brought to the Beni region and to this conflict, which is rather a forgotten conflict. Uh, this is some. This is uh, a conflict that has been going on since at least 2014. Uh, many people will say it has been going since uh, much uh, longer than that. And um, to the uh, rest of the world, I think this is a very um, few people know about this conflict in mm. detail, and there have been no attention to it. So I think. Only the, the, for me, the positive thing with the state of siege is that it's brought at least attention and discussion on this conflict, and maybe uh, it can bring to some solution. Jackie, what have you noticed in the past three months that's been positive? I, I, I'm, we hear from people uh, on the ground, from the populations that are in areas around Beni and elsewhere, that they were hopeful that the central government was deciding to take a real stand and to invest in security in the area. And, uh, and I, I mean, I think that's something that, that we're all looking for, that we're wanting to see uh, engagement in all of the different sectors. This is military engagement. Mm -hmm. Obviously, hopefully, we would be looking for civilian and police, justice, etc. cetera. But, uh, but, but the, the fact that the, that, that, the, that the capital is paying so much attention and is investing in, in the possibility of a, of a more peaceful future, I think, is positive. Mm, paying attention, Minister. Uh, yes, for the first thing I think uh, is that we start now 
to, to it's the end of this catastrophic situation because the situation starts a bit uh, uh, like in the 1994 uh, after the rose crisis in Rwanda. It started there till today, 25 years later. Now we are facing terrorism. To, to put this country uh, in this part of the country under a state of siege was a request. The state of siege is the answer the President Tshisekedi is providing to those people who've been crying uh, every day. I think you saw the images. Sometimes when people speak about the situation in the East, it's always about people dying. And now the government takes the decision to start finally to end this situation and will put everything on the table because this, the solution on this crisis requires a lot of things, diplomatically, economically, but let's start by military, because we are facing terrorism. The terrorists can all be shut up when we bring weapon, when we bring military. In the other level, we are trying to bring solution uh, by providing social security, uh, trying, trying to, to build a strong economy in the region, because we think that that will be uh, the start of the definitive solution okay. on this matter. Let me give our audience an idea of the kind of violence that civilians have to face on a daily basis. Uh, this is North Kivu. This is an ambush and it happened in July. Have a look. I don't even really know which angle we were attacked from. The enemy suddenly appeared and started firing bullets from that side. Immediately, we dumped our motorbike and looked for a hiding place in the bush. We lost our Congolese compatriots who were passengers in this vehicle with their belongings. But thank God we managed to save some of the wounded who were ambushed by the Allied Democratic Forces and its allies. So I'm just thinking here, Fred, uh, you know, as a, as a researcher, somebody who's following very closely what's happening in the DRC, that there are more than 100 armed groups. How many are there exactly, to your best of your knowledge? Um, it would be very risky to say, to put an exact number, but uh, at least um, according to the last report by the Kivu Security Tracker, we have now around 120 armed groups in, um, in the eastern part of DRC. Um, most of those groups are in North Kivu, Ituri, and, and South Kivu. Okay, so how and, does military yeah. law, which is effectively what a state of stage is, how does military law deal with over 100 separate armed groups over multiple provinces? How is that possible? Well, I think this is, uh, this is the first problem with, with the state of siege in itself. This is hundreds of uh, armed groups. Uh, which have different ways of acting and different uh, uh, reason why they, they, they decide to fight. And you cannot respond to all of them only by military operations. The um, state of siege solution is a purely military one. Um, and I don't think it is a, uh, it is a long, it is a lasting solution for, for the, the crisis in the Eastern Congo. Mm -hmm. the, the, the problem of armed group is very complex, and a solution to it will require to understand it in its complexity. Mm -hmm. It will require uh, the government to think of um, internal problem inside the army, to require the government to think of uh, the accountability problem, to require the government to understand the economy of those armed group. And without that, uh, any solution will be just a, a very short-term solution. And, uh, and, and that's, I think, uh, that's why I think sort of siege somehow it's kind of um, a very um, not thoughtful solution to this conflict. Jackie, the reason we wanted you in this conversation was really important because the civilians are really important, but they always get pushed aside in the DRC. You see them running from one village to another village, escaping, then moving back and then running away again. This is the way of life for many Congolese. Can you tell us a story that really helps us connect with their, their disastrous situation that they're in right now? The problem is I think that there are, there are too many stories and unfortunately they're really similar. We, we, we know that there are between two and three million people displaced here in, internally in North Kivu at the moment. Of those, some 680,000 were displaced this year. 
But in fact, those numbers understate the number of times somebody was displaced. Very many people, particularly in that area around Beni, have been forced from their homes originally. They've gone and found shelter in their neighbors' homes and villages. They've then had to flee together with their neighbors to another place and another. And or indeed, in, in other cases, uh, there are families who will stay overnight in their own village, but who are unable to get to their fields just up the road. People who are uh, able to get to the fields, but not able to go home to the stocks of food and, and, and their goods in their, in their villages of origin. So what we see is that, uh, is that families start out with, with very little, and then over time, they progressively lose not only their possessions, but also connections with their communities and, and with the land that is so important, of course, if you're trying to, to maintain an ordinary life. So, you know, unfortunately, this is, this is a story that many, very many people uh, all at the same time. Um, and while people are running away from the armed groups, they're running uh, away from the rural areas into the cities. This is a point that Joseph had made to us a little bit earlier. Have a listen, have a look. We saw that there has been a, an increasing of uh, military operation around two provinces, North Kivu and Ituri. And those military operation uh, have launched, they have launched uh, a type of uh, rural exodus and the kind of rural the population, people are leaving their rural areas as they fear attacks and they can move for their safety, they can move in the big cities. All right, guests, we have an audience who really wants to talk to you, so I'm going to ask you to do very brief responses back to them. Uh, Fred, let me start with this one for you. What of the UN? Why hasn't the mission worked over several decades? So we're talking about MONOSCO here, um, and that is a UN mission that has been in the DRC. In fact, they, they fought pretty impressively and have had some success. Fred, what of the UN? Well, the UN have been successful to fight uh, in 2012 against the M23 in 2013. Um, since then, the UN is, is very present in, the, in that region, and it has been widely criticized for its inaction and its incapacity to put an end to those massacres. Mm. And many people have been asking for a renewal of the uh, uh, International Brigade, which is in the eastern part. And I think Patrick maybe will mention it. Um, there have been discussions recently on how to uh, renew those uh, some of the militaries in that regard by the government and, and the UN. I would like to hear more about that by uh, Patrick Mayer. Let me just bring in the minister. Uh, minister Francis has this question. I'm going to give this one to you uh, on YouTube. So many people, multinational companies, have their hands in the trouble in the Democratic Republic of Congo, especially previous governments. Is exploitation by capitalist interests a problem? Uh, take the filter off, Minister. Be honest. Go ahead. <laughs> no, the first thing I would like to, to, have to say here is that the first, the, what we saw as ambush was a terrorist attack. We are facing terrorism. This must be clear. And the terrorist, the question becomes more, com more, more complex because in the region, we have a lot of uh, mineral resources which is uh, the subject of all those companies you are mentioning. So what we are doing now is that under a state of siege, we bring this martial law to make sure secure in uh, to make sure those all those mining companies. There is a lot, especially owned by some Chinese company, who work and they don't pay anything. What we are doing now is to try to see the way we can cut all those uh, operations mm. who take money, who take mining and everything, Colton and everything on that. Because the problem in the region is that we have neighbor. Those people who took some mining or resources from DRC make transits in country in our neighborhood. That's why in this, in this matter, the diplomatic section is one of the key points. The president Tshisekedi was here for, he left, he stayed in North Kivu for like three weeks. Mm -hmm. He met the president Kagame, the president Museveni, to talk about, and to talk about the economy. 
Because yeah. one of the main reasons of this terrorist attack, of all these problems we are having, is that the region is very rich. It's really rich. Now, Minister, it's like you have just got yes. money in the earth. And if you control the earth, you have got endless riches, endless wealth. So I, my, my thought is, how do, you, how do you even solve that? For, I'm going to let Fred in here. I want to know, how do you solve that problem? If there's literally money in the ground, how are you going to get rid of armed groups? Why, why would they go? No, Fred, no, Fred, no, let, let, me, let me let Fred no. take over. Fred, Fred is the expert here. <laughs> I'm just a passionate African. Fred, go ahead. No, I would, I would really love to hear Mr. Minister more on, on this. But I think there is two um, general misconceptions or misunderstanding you know, of conflict in, uh, in, in, in the East, or at least the recent trend. The first one is that uh, the mining is the main reason why people fight in that region. Well, that's, well while that has been true for uh, some time in the past, I think the, um, the economy of armed group has been transformed tremendously during the, the, last, uh, the last year. There is more than mine. There is local taxes and stuff like that, which are more of a local economy that is uh, help many armed group in the region to, to, to live. The other mm -hmm. thing is, uh, I sense a, sense a level of incoherence in the, strate in, in the uh, uh, strategy of the current government, where they, uh, at the same time, they tend to focus on regional cooperation, which may be um, a, a good thing, but it, it looks like they underestimate the, the negative role that some countries in the region have been playing for years in the conflict situation in, in the East. And the last thing for me is, um, since the beginning, like, it's now more than three months that, 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 since the state of siege has been proclaimed. Is it working, Fred? Um, can, is it working? Well, that, that's the question. I think it's not working. I would like the, the, uh, Mr. Patrick uh, to tell us how many people have been arrested um, because of their collaboration with armed group. How many businessmen, how many MPs, how many politicians have been Oh, Fred, let's, been let's, arrested? let's give the minister some space. Uh, minister, go ahead. Do you have these figures? <laughs> uh, I think Fred wants to be the No, Nervous laughter tonight. from the minister. One thing, one thing <laughs> I'm, have, I'm happy to share the show with him. Go ahead, minister, sorry. And it, it, must, it, must be, it must be clear for all those who are watching this, this show that yeah. the situation in the S is very complex because it's like for 20 years or 25 years. So, Minister, so if, if I may, because we're getting to we the, came, end, of, end, of the and, end of the show, um, and we will get you back again. But did you have any figures for Fred? He asked you a couple of direct questions. Did you have any? Or, no, is, I, or is your answer, I, I will give it's him, complex? No, I will answer him because it's very, go ahead. it's very important to understand, the, to understand the context. Here you have, since we've been appointed as government, it's been like 100 days. It's my second time to being here in Benin. Mm -hmm. It means that the government, for the government, it's clear we have a plan. We need to go step by step because we know the situation is complex. We must make sure our military has everything to fight all those terrorists in one level. In the second level... So, Minister, they, I am they, going to push natural, you because oh, I am running out of time. Can you answer one of Fred's questions? No, let, 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 no, let, 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 no, no I will you can't. ask you his question, but yes. first... Oh, oh, I'm, okay. running, I'm running out of time, Minister. Let, 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 Can let you me, answer Fred's let, question, let yes or no? Me. Just one, just one. You don't have to do the whole list of them. One of of them. course, I can, I can ask. I can ask. I can ask on, on one of his questions. Fred, repeat, because you see, repeat I'm, the question. I'm, Fred is an activist. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Fred, repeat the just first question. Just one question. Repeat the first question, Yeah, Fred. like one, one easy question maybe would be, what are, what are the figures? Since the military have a lot of power, how many um, people the military have arrested? How many politicians, high top level politician, has been arrested? No, as no. Being you know part the, of the, the uh, question that the, the way the way you are asking question, you cannot find a good answer. First of all, we put under a state of siege. We are in the first world. People like you mm -hmm. must understand why we are doing that. Mm -hmm. We are doing that to start to bring solution. It's a short-term solution which give us the availability to have all those 
Minister, uh, do, do, ex do excuse me, I feel like we do not first. have enough time in this second. show for you to get to an answer to Fred's question. But I do appreciate you answering the question. I do appreciate that it's going to take a longer time than we have in this show for you to get to it. I want to get to Christoph Vogel. Uh, Minister, I I'm moving on with the show now because I've spent long enough on getting an answer for one question. Christoph Vogel is a research director of the Conflict Research Group at Ghent University. Um, and Christoph makes this really interesting point. Let's play it. One of the points that has been actually um, uh, a little bit neglected is that um, on the ground in many places across North Kivu and Ituri, um, Nothing much has actually changed because even before this uh, state of siege, um, populations have been used for, for years and years to actually a state of siege-like situation, either through ongoing military operations or through uh, the control of um, one of the many armed groups. So I think it's also important to see things um, from a bigger picture and, and not forget the whole entire context um, where this uh, new situation has been coming in. So... Not that much has really changed for civilians, says Christoph. I want to put this question to you, Jackie, and this comes from YouTube. We often get it when we talk about civilians um, who are in really difficult situations. What can the international community do to help control the violence? What are you able to do? What are your colleagues able to do, Jackie, to support civilians? So, humanitarians, of course, don't control violence, what we do is to respond to its impacts. Uh, since the beginning of the state of siege, we've seen some 12,000 families displaced in the area around Misisi and what's called the small north, the Tinar. There are uh, many thousands more displaced around Beni. The, the, the change that has happened since the beginning of the state of siege around Beni is that whereas in the past the cycle of, uh, of, of operations, military operations, and then the reclaiming of territory by armed groups has been more or less on a, on a one-off basis. At this point, there are multiple fronts. So people are being displaced now from multiple areas at the same time. There are fewer areas for people to be able to take refuge. Areas that in the past were agricultural areas where people were able to go and, and seek a bit of quiet, a bit of peace, are now also being fought over. So what we're seeing is a, an, an amplification of the military activity and unfortunately an amplification also of reprisals in some cases by armed groups against the local population. Unfortunately, what we haven't seen yet and, and the, the deputy uh, governor here is, is a policeman, so we're hoping very much that his contribution will become a little bit more visible, is the, the follow-up to the military activity. Military operations can dislodge armed groups, but unless they are followed by civilian leaders and by trained, equipped uh, salaried and and uh, and well-managed police, we're not necessarily going to see the stability that the population is hoping for. So, as this first phase, we're seeing a lot of a lot of movement, a lot of military movement, and unfortunately, a lot of displacement, as well as some some pretty serious uh, human rights violations committed by armed groups and and some accusations against security forces. What we're looking to see is that next stage, that stabilization phase, where populations are going to be able to rely on their civilian leaders and and on the the security forces that are supposed to be working there on an ordinary, normal life. I am going to end with some pictures here on my laptop that, Minister, you shared with us. This is what you were doing earlier on today, a few hours before this show started. You were, village, you were visiting a military hospital with the Prime Minister of the DRC. Yes, we did. We, yes. Uh, and talking mm -hmm. to the we military. The and, and people were putting their lives on the line to help Very secure pleasure. Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. I, I am just about to wrap up here, but I'm going to ask you a very direct question, which I need a very direct answer from you. Are you winning the security challenge? Are you succeeding? Of course, we are happy today. What I have to tell you that all those armed groups today, we have a reddition, almost 4,000 reddition mm -hmm. of those local armed groups. And we create what we call demobilization program. And right. we appoint the people who are going to take care of them. That's a progress. The other yes. progress is that our military are well motivated. 
by the presence of the Prime Minister and the President in the region in the past day. We are in the Thank good you, path, Minister. in the good way and we think We're it's ending going to take on time, a but positive note, the but from the Minister of Communication from the DRC, so that is his job. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, YouTube commenters. I'll see you next time. Take care.